Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And bless thee, kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires know, and from you no secrets are given. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed, and so I spoke. We also believe, and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look at not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord. himself and is divided, he cannot stand, for his, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins, what, whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting. asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. 
Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Them up. 
In Latin, the word was pondus. It's where we get ponderous from, weighty. Right? And everything had a pondus. Right? And so some objects, like human beings, rocks, you know, have a pondus that pulls them down. Some things, incense, for example, right? in the temple, rising, has a pondus that pulls them up. Right? Birds with those wings. They, they, they really tried, they worked hard on birds. It's like, what is going on with birds? But somehow, when those birds have their wings out, they gain a pondus. In a sense, they felt that birds became heavier with the wings out because they started getting pulled up, as opposed to just kind of hovering in one spot. That you're kind of an equilibrium of pondus, right? Again, they were trying to figure it out. You should even, you know, I, I won't even go into how they thought like arrows and catapults worked. I mean, it was, but they knew they worked, but they just didn't know how. So everything had a weight, pulling it up and or pulling it down. Now, of course, you and I both know, say in the in the ancient cosmology, up is where God is, down is where death mainly. Devil comes later, but that's where death is. Things go down to the ground. That's where dead things go. God is in heaven, and there's a pondus that pulls things like the incense of the temple is pulling the incense, and that's the whole root of the metaphor of the ancients for how let my prayers rise up in thy sight as the incense. That God is literally pulling the prayers up to himself. That prayers don't just kind of, we think of that, ooh, incense, floating, floating, prayers just floating up to God. But no, in the ancient mind, it was much more active. It's like prayers, like incense, are being pulled. There's a weight to prayer that brings it to its destination, that brings it to its home. So, all that to say, right, I'm going somewhere, hang in there with me, I'm on San Francis Bay. <laughs> How much is smoke? <laughs> now, Fortunately for Sir Francis, there was a brand new consumer product which had been made available by the exploration of the New World and its colonization, particularly in Virginia, and that was tobacco cigars. So, Sir Francis Bacon had the bright idea, I'm going to take one of those Virginia cigars, and I'm going to put it on my scale, on the pan of the scale, and I'm going to weigh it as a cigar. So he did that. Then, he smoked the cigar carefully blowing the smoke up, right? And carefully tapping the ashes of the cigar back onto the pan until he smoked the cigar down to the nub, right? Where he would almost burn his lips. And all the ash, he tried to keep all the ash on the pan, right? And then he, now do you see what he was able to do? If you take the weight of the cigar before it was smoked, and subtract the weight of the ashes, you come up with the weight of smoke. <laughs> I love the early modern period. That's the kind of thing that they, like, that would happen then. It is this conception of weight that lies at the heart of St. Paul's metaphor. That is, that the Holy Spirit gives us a weight gives us the weight of the risen Jesus. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Now, as so often, the lectionary cuts it off, and you get you, the lesson for you starts with just as, right? Just as we have the same spirit of faith. Now, you can either take up your leaflet or, you know, take a Bible out of it. It's like it's on his honor system. <laughs> you can look it up when you go home, I suppose. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with the scripture. Now, what you miss out is that actually the first word of that verse is but. Is a contrastive. That is, what you're getting here is Paul in midstream. He's in the middle of an argument. Let me take, roll back the tape a little bit right, to where it really starts, which is in verse 8. St. Paul says, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, 
persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. So, so what St. Paul is setting up here is this idea that in our lives and worldly circumstances, we're getting pulled down. Right? The weight of the world weighs upon us, taking us towards Sheol. But what St. Paul is trying to get the Corinthians to understand is that there is another weight at work. Just wait. So he says, but, but, despite the appearances, despite the fact that it seems like we are under the power of death, you know, despite the appearances that we're persecuted, that we're beaten up, we go from town to town and they beat us up. In a sense, Paul was saying, you know, we all know about entropy. See, that's an enlightenment thing. So we all know about entropy, right? We all know the fact that, you know, things are falling apart. And we know that our bodies are falling apart, and yet there's something else there's some other light, there's some other weight in us. But just as we have the same spirit, now in the NRSV it doesn't capitalize it, but I would encourage you in your mind to capitalize the word spirit. Because there's just one power that Paul is talking about here. The Holy Spirit. There's only one spirit. But the same spirit with a capital S, you can even take out a pen or pencil, you can mark it in your Bible if you want it. I, I give you permission. The same spirit of faith, of trust, that is in accordance with the scripture, I believe and so I spoke. So what, what is going on here? Is this random, I believe and so I spoke? What, well, because if you had the prior verses about suffering, about Christian suffering, you, and then you knew that this verse was coming from Psalm 116, which is a psalm of lament, of suffering. And so basically this verse, what this verse is, basically the, the psalmist is saying, I'm, I'm, I'm suffering, life is horrible, you know, my enemies are after me, you know, I'm going to die, death has me, the cords of Sheol, it's one of, it's one of those great friends, the cords of Sheol have surrounded me. It's like the image here is like someone who's like, if you've ever, you're swimming in a pond and you have like weeds that are pulling at you, and that if, if, you're, in, if you're suffering, right, if you're in despair, if you're in depression, Sometimes that can be how it feels, right? That in a sense, you're like in a dark pond where the weeds have gotten around you and you can't swim free. And so the psalmist says, my life is like that. It's like I'm getting pulled down alive into Sheol. The weight of death, the weight of my suffering is pulling me down. I can't escape. And then the verse that Paul quotes, this is the turn where he says, but I've trusted. Instead of believe, I want you to hear a trust. But I trust. And then I spoke, and then I said to God, and what follows is praise. So in the midst of my suffering, I trusted in God, and I praised him for a deliverance that is in the future. For the psalmist, the deliverance is in the future, but he praises God for having already given it to him. And Paul is saying, that's what our life is like as Christians. We're being pulled down by that pondus. We're being pulled down by the weight of sin, death of our bad choices and the choices that other people make that affect us both at the same time and yet if we trust if we trust and so paul goes on we also trust like the psalmist that we also is like we along with the psalmist the the faith of israel is at work in us so we speak because we know that the one who raised okay so this is a directional word right he raised Jesus Christ will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. So the idea here is that just as Jesus had a, a weight that brought him to the right hand of the Father, in the power of the Holy Spirit, that same weight, that force, is working in you, in me, and all who are willing to trust God to be at work in them, even when from the point of view of the world, things are going downhill. 
were falling apart. Life was just getting harder. When the world sees all those things, if we can trust, there is another power at work in us. So we don't lose heart, Paul says. So we don't lose heart because we know, even though our outer humanity, I want you to, instead of nature, don't get, you know, that, that makes people think, well, you know, the, you know, like, is that material versus something spiritual, floaty, ghosty, like, no. When he, mean, when he says nature, he means your humanity. What makes you a human person? Our outer humanity is wasting away. But our inner humanity is being renewed day by day. You see, the weight of God's love is pulling us toward him. The weight of God's love. So think of yourself. It's almost kind of like, you know, it's like sometimes if, uh, you know, I don't know if you've been in like, uh, you know, yoga or something. It's like when you're going from the, you know, from the cheek, you know, you got the cheek going. It's like you got that center, your little belly button. And you're, you know, it's like you're trying to lean with that belly button. It's like something like there's only like a little hook. Think of it as like the belly button is in your soul. And it's like God has you by the center of who you are. The very deepest part of who you are and who God has called you to be. The lover of other humans. That God created you, just you to be in a special way. In a way given to you by the Spirit with myriad gifts. All different ways of being a lover of, a lover of people. The Greeks would say, you know, a lover of men. But so like, a lover of people. God has you by that. And he's pulling you from the inside out to home, to life with him. That's what's going on. See, St. Paul is trying to unlock for the Corinthians and for you and me what is really going on here. That's what I think. It's like, Friends, I hope you didn't come here for helpful advice on how to make it through tomorrow, right? I mean, like, news you can use. If you can get that from the supermarket, just look at the magazines. Five tips for at this. Seven ways to do that, right? If you think Christianity is that you're in the wrong place, it doesn't work that way. But if you're wondering what is really going on, in the world, and what is really going on in me? How do I make sense of my own autobiography? Where am I headed? Because I know where I've been, and I can see this trajectory, and it, I'm confused. Am I going, am I heading down, or am I heading up? Where am I headed? Where is the weight of my life taking me? Where's the momentum of my life taking me? And Paul is saying, if you can trust God to work in you even when you're in pain, if you can trust God's love even when you're in despair, when you can then use that trust to empower you to love others in their pain, there's another weight at work in the world. There's another weight at work in you. See, in verse 17, it says, for this slight momentary affliction, again, you have to remember that in the Greek text, there's no punctuation at all, which means you can put in punctuation. The rabbis love to do that. I would put in a comma between slight and momentary because the, the contrast here is it's slight in comparison to God's power, right? The weight that pulls us down Physically, morally, emotionally, spiritually, that weight is slight compared to the weight that's pulling us towards love. That is the good news, that God's power of love working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. That's from Ephesians, but I'm, I'm mixing it all together here. It's all Paul. This slight momentary, again, because as Paul's pointing out here, human life is very, very short. 
you know, God's life is very, very long. <laughs> you know, like, it's like, you know, he, he'll be very, very small. God's very, very big. So it's a slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure to infinite grace, infinite love, infinite love. That is our inheritance. That's our home. That's where we're being pulled. And so Paul, again, never afraid to mix metaphors, and he's an inspiration to me, never afraid to mix metaphors, then shifts the metaphor in, at the last verse in, your, in, in the reading, for we know that if the earthly tent, now we're talking about tents. But if we know that the earthly tent we live in this room, we have a building. So, and again, think about, you know, with Paul, if you've ever been a backpacker, you carry that tent on your back, you can do that. It's only, you know, an REI, they're only like three pounds. They're amazing. Great work <laughs> of science. Think about how light a tent is and how heavy the temple in Jerusalem is. Think about how light a tent is that you put on a donkey's back and when you go and you're camping out on the road from, as you travel from city to city like Paul does, and how much that weighs versus all that stone in the temple. That's, what he, that's the metaphor going on here. So the challenge of Paul, the challenge that Paul lays out to you and to me is stop living a tenting life. Stop living as if the weight that's pulling you down is what's going to shape your destiny. Start living a temple life, a building life, a weightier life, a life that can have an impact on others, not just for a day, not just for a week, but a forever impact. That's what's on offer. That's the challenge. Paul saying to the Corinthians and to you and me, stop living like you're a tent people. Start living in the building that God has made for you. The life of love and mercy that no power of this world can touch or harm, even in the midst of great suffering. Just ask the martyrs and the saints. They're the witness, just as Paul himself. So he goes on after this. So again, we're in mid, we're in mid argument here. So just a few more verses. For in this tent we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling. If indeed, when we have taken off, we will not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan under our burden because, again, when we think that this is all there is, the weight of the world. You know, it's heavy upon us. While we live in this tent, we groan under our burden because we wish not to be unclothed, but to be further clothed. And it says to be given a building on top of us so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. And I'm going to end on this verse. So that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. You see, the normal human perspective, when you think of something swallowing up, what usually swallows up? Death, right? Death usually comes up and swallows up and takes us down to the grave. That was the dominant metaphor of the Psalms, right? I'm being swallowed up by death. I'm being swallowed up by evil. I'm being swallowed up by suffering. I'm being swallowed up by this cancer. I'm being swallowed up in my addiction. I'm being swallowed up. And Paul is saying, no, 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 no. The good news the good news is that because the power of God's love working in you, actually, we're being swallowed up from above. We're being swallowed up by life. We can be swallowed up by love. That's the direction of the consolation. The direction is in love. So beloved, Sir Francis Bacon wondered, what is the weight of smoke? And I ask you, I ask you to pray about, what's the weight of my heart? Where am I headed? And he 
hear the good news of Jesus, that you have an eternal weight upon you, pulling you to glory, pulling you to healing, pulling you to forgiveness, pulling you into a new start, pulling you into everything that is God's life lived within us and the power of the Spirit. Rise. Loving one another, let us with one mind confess the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one in essence and undivided. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things remain. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. With our whole heart and mind, let us pray to the Lord. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That they all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. The Church may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for our armed forces and first responders, <laughs> and for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they be delivered from their distress. We give thanks for the service of our frontline medical workers and teachers during the COVID pandemic. We pray that all countries will have access to the vaccines and that infection rates will further decline in the U.S. and around the world. We pray also for all children who are without adequate food, clothing, shelter, medical care, or education. Call your servants to respond to their needs, that every child may have the opportunity to achieve the fullness of their human potential. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of thy faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which are offered before thee for all members of thy holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and godly serve thee, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God, most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you. God, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. 
For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring an everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please rise. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I'd like you to exchange Christ's peace with your neighbor. Unsung Psalms, which again focus on these laments. So those of you who've been with me for Unsung Psalms, we know about the laments of Israel through the Psalms. And uh, then on June 11, we'll celebrate the Feast of St. Barnabas uh, at 5.30 on Friday here in the cathedral. On June 13th, we'll start our new paraclete service at 11.30. And uh, Paul Deemer has joined the staff as our music minister for that service, and so we're looking forward to uh, beginning that. And again, I'm calling it a soft launch because we're going to work out the kinks, and we're going to kind of, you know, get, get into it, learn how to do a new service, and, and uh, not beat ourselves up. How about that? Why don't we just give ourselves grace to learn as Christians how to do new things, right? And that would be a good model for the world, I think. So we're going to be learning. Uh, next week at the Paraclete service at 11.30. And um, today, being the first Sunday of the month, it is Birthday Blessing Sunday. So if you have a birthday in the month of June, I invite you to come forward and receive your blessing. Oh, good. There's the, oh, see, it takes one to get going. That's right. Oh, good. That's like, you know, it's like in my, in my fantasy about that thing, like, you know, like, keep it straight, you know, I hear it's your birthday, do 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 It's like, we'll celebrate it. Come on, glory. Great. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for these, your servants, who celebrate the anniversary of their birth this month. We pray that when they fall, that you would raise them up. That wherever they are weak, that they would know your strength. And that when they are joyful, they would find their joy complete in you. And finally, that you bring them into your kingdom where the voice of those who feast and celebrate is never ceasing. And I bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And happy birthday. So this Sunday is also our Teacher and Graduate Recognition Sunday, and so uh, I like to, our, you know, it's like we see, so, oh good, you're, you hung out in the front, good. And so I'd like to call our Sunday School teachers to come forward, and we'd like to, uh, you know, come on, come on here, Deacon Pan, we've got a gifting, you know, you got, you got to have, you got to have a takeaway. Yes, come on, it is, it's a chipper, Lex, come on down, here we have Linda, good. Brian, yes. And so even in the midst of the, of the pandemic, our, uh, our Christian formation, especially with our children, our youth, continue and, uh, by Zoom. And so I'm just so grateful to uh, our, our teachers who, through this very challenging season, creatively sought to engage our children and youth in Christian formation, even when we couldn't be here in person. It was, uh, you know, I'm so glad you said yes. You didn't sign up for a pandemic. 
Uh, none of us did, but I'm so glad you stuck it out and that you were with our children and with our youth through this season. I personally am grateful as a consumer of the ministry in my household. So thank you all for working with the preacher's kid. And, uh, but uh, let's uh, express our, our appreciation for our team. them and bless them for the upcoming season of Life of the Church. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for these who have put themselves forward to be teachers of your people. We pray that you, in the power of your Holy Spirit, would fill them with wisdom, that you would help them communicate the good news of your Son, Jesus, and his love for all. We pray that you would give them strength and that you would also uh, bless them in this work and in their lives together. Pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. And we have another future consumer of the ministry. <laughs> <laughs> and, fine, I told you, it's a busy Sunday. And, but wait, there's more. It's like a Get Two commercial. And so we have our, it's also Senior Sunday. And so we have a graduating senior. So, Audrey Virtue, would you please come forward? And it's a pleasure to uh, invite Audrey. Congratulations and well wishes. That really warmed my heart. And so now that I've graduated, I'm going to go to Colin College. To major in English or literature. And um, that being said, it looks like you'll be stuck with me for the next couple of years because I'll be here locally. But yeah, that's about all. <laughs> for us and offering and sacrifice unto God.
shall forth your glory be in all the world. Therefore we praise you. Join our voices with angels and all our
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessed God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.